Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And let us get right to the news. Okay, we've got three articles today. They're all going to be about Kenobi up to episode three. Up through episode three, apologies. So if you've not seen Kenobi up to this point, you might want to click away and go watch it. Spoiler alert, in other words. All right, article number one. Reva was on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote the show, and she had a few interesting things to say, well, at least in my opinion. She said that she'd never watched any of the Star Wars films until she got the role of Reva, for starters. The audition for her character was so mysterious that she didn't know she was even getting a lightsaber until she showed up for her first day of what they call Jedi School, which is the name of the training program at Lucasfilm that actors who will be playing Force users must go through. Probably teaches them how to... Sounds like basic training or something. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it does teach them things like wire work and okay. all this other stuff. Though I think she said for her wall run scene, she didn't use wires. She just ran up a wall? I don't... Hey, she said <laughs> She's it, She's got real force powers? Maybe. Maybe. Kimo brought up the video she posted a year ago on May the 4th, showing off her lightsaber skills. And apparently, though unsurprisingly, she did get in trouble for that. Because, of course... You can't do that. It's spilling secrets. Yeah, the and NDA, they, they will come for you, and then they will disappear you. But in her words, she thought it was easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Wow. Which okay. means she did it intentionally. Which, by saying that, you'd think they would have, I mean, if they wanted to take her to court. Because you do sign as a... Yeah, as actors on a project, you sign pretty lengthy contracts. Because the last thing that these people, you know, showrunners want is their entire show to be ruined. Yeah. By secrets getting out there, and she just apparently didn't care. It was it was Katie Sackhoff who plays Bill Katan, who said they have some pretty badass NDAs. In other words, I'm sure there is all kinds of clauses and stipulations where they could easily, if they yeah. wanted to, take you to court. And I mean, they're gonna understand take your money away. if you make an honest mistake, because most yeah. of the time you look like you made an honest mistake. But she, on the other hand, thought she would just post it to her feed; it would be up there for 24 hours, no big deal. Wow. And I mean, once it's up there for two anyway. minutes, it's going to be on the entire internet. It just, it, you know, <laughs> it it's not like it just minutes, goes so away. Not. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Especially if you're an actor who's attached to a project like Kenobi. Yeah. People are going to be watching you for any little thing and then and it's, it's out there it immediately. forever. Yeah, so that's, grabbing it. And... That's kind of a weird thing to admit to. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean. I could, I would have just stuck with a, I, I wasn't thinking, oops, not like I did it on purpose. Oh, did you ask for forgiveness than All permission? Right. Well, because you, you weren't going to get permission and you knew you weren't going to get permission. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, the fact That's that That's just they, admitting she knew she shouldn't do that and was going to get in I mean, trouble. Simply the fact that she didn't even know she was getting a lightsaber until she showed up for Jedi school means that maybe they were keeping it on the DL. Well, yeah. They're and then she's everything. like, hey, everybody, look at my lightsaber skills. And they're like... It's so strange. Well, not strange. I don't want to say it's strange, considering it's the, the day and age of the internet. But everything is kept on lockdown. I, I mm -hmm. remember the the prequel trilogy when it was coming out, where you would get behind the scenes, you know, mini web documentary, the webisodes or whatever they were called. I can't think of the name. Well, it's it's so much harder to keep secrets now. Well, it was. They were still on the internet back then. They were on StarWars.com back then. There wasn't even like a YouTube or anything. You could just watch the making of the films before they came out. You were getting behind the scenes looks at everything and interviews and clips. It was. It's crazy to think we've gone from that to like an actor will be shot if they, you know, reveal they have a lightsaber. And I'm obviously <laughs> exaggerating quite a bit, but, but you know what time, I mean. I appreciate that they're trying to keep the secrecy. I don't. I didn't read a single leak. For Kenobi, because I, I wanted to watch yeah. it unfold without having any opinions before. I wanted to see the entirety of it the way it was meant to be seen without going, well, I read this and this is how it's going to go. No, I get that. And, and back in the day, like I said, it was on StarWars.com. There was no social media up until, well, maybe the bitter end of the prequels. There was really no social media. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, like things it is, spread yeah, like wildfire whether you want to see it or not. You had, to, you had to go and look for these webisodes. And, you know, even then, it's not like everybody would... You know, there were forums and stuff, which I was on, but not everybody was even into the finer details. It's it's strange how things have changed. Mm -hmm. As for the lightsaber training, Ingram says, Deborah Chow encouraged her and Ewan to train together, hoping that this would possibly develop some off-screen tensions that would be translated to on-screen tension, which could mean maybe they're going to cross sabers at one point. I would imagine, right? I mean, they really haven't even encountered each other yet. Other, oh. I mean, they do a little in episode two, but they're not even, they don't even go face to face or anything. They're just, you know, it's kind of... And then she, she told this really weird story. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> don't ask me, ask them. They can't answer. This is what I mean. You so they don't have story. 
it's easier to ask forgiveness than. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Here's the story. She told the story then about you know this whole tension she was supposed to have with Ewan. Apparently, one day driving to the to the filming lot, she was behind a motorcycle and they're coming up to a yellow light. The motorcycle stopped and she was all annoyed and ticked off. She's like, "Why would you stop? Yellow is green, but lighter." Mm. Yeah, that's an exact quote because I don't remember these things. So then. The light changes. I'm she goes around you. the motorcycle and gets in front of, right in front of him, and then the light changed. The next light changed, and she had to stop. Then, because she's like, "Ah, whatever, we're not going the same place." Yeah, they when they did arrive there. It was it was you and that she Ewan. like cut off the because she Jedi. stopped at the yellow light like you're supposed to. <laughs> yes, that yellow light does not mean speed up and try to get through it before it's red. It, it that's does how mean, accidents happen. Yes, I know everybody I see driving in the world today thinks that's what yellow means, but. That's not what I mean. So props to Ewan for obeying the, the traffic actually knowing laws. his traffic laws, being a true Jedi on and off the road. <laughs> All right, let's move on then to our next article. We have more insights from Kenobi writer Joby Harold. He seriously did. I swear he did interviews with everybody. He didn't do one with me. Well, so it's did not you ask him? <laughs> Touche. Okay, so this inf- interview all comes from the Nerdist. Okay, Deborah Chow has described the series as a character study, and Harold says that this was the guiding principle that he had throughout, that it was to be a 360-degree view of Obi-Wan, who he was, what he'd been doing, you know, as he's a byproduct of those experiences. As for Padme over the Padme overtones used with the young Leia, there's a reason for that. Harold says Padme is a massive part of, of where he was, who he was. The guilt to which he carries is really important. It's not what the show is about, but not to acknowledge Padme. I just didn't want her to not be a part of the conversation of the show because she deserves to be. Padme and her relationship with everyone and the residual feelings of the past and that which he carries with him, she's part of that. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I don't have any problem with the quote-unquote Padme overtones. I don't know. I guess I didn't really consider how much guilt he might feel over Padme dying. Well, sure. I'm sure he feels guilt over that, but there has to be... Wouldn't there be a tiny speck of them that would say Padme should have known better? I mean, Padme kept it a secret, too. She lied about this, too. This is not... She's not blameless in this, I don't think. Unfortunately, no. She didn't tell Obi-Wan the truth. No, she could have... She lied to him as well. She lied to everybody. I mean, she kept up the lie just as much as Anakin did. All right, in episode three, it took our boy Kenobi's a while to ignite his lightsaber. Harold said he's been ten years in a cave, and the use of the Force or the lightsaber would draw attention. He's habitually gotten to the place... Where that's in his past, you know, for now. So we deliberately didn't see him use it effectively until that moment. It was a first step. When did he effectively use it? I guess when he stopped Leia from smashing into the ground. Oh, the force. I thought we were talking about lightsabers. Yeah. You... <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess he effectively used the force there, sure. I mean, is it... I've always thought it was just a riding the bike type thing, right? I mean, you can you can not ride a bike for twenty years and but you just. But you still be a little out of practice. Well, sure, but it doesn't take more than. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I just can't imagine it's like something you completely kind of forget, and unless you're intentionally disconnecting yourself and stuff, I, I don't know. It's there's still questions in that scenario. Yeah. So then let's just move on to our last bit here today. Bonnie Pisces, a.k.a. Brew Lars, said she will have an increased presence in the second half of Kenobi. Well, she couldn't have a de- decreased presence considering... She could. She could not be in it again at all. <laughs> yeah, know, so we, there. We catch a glimpse of her through... Bingo. When everyone is watching Luke, yeah. Yeah, because she has had one scene so far, blurry from a distance, so it's not hard for them to do. Bonnie did also hype the last episode, saying it was extraordinary. Her interview was with Comic Book Nation podcast... She said, I won't give anything away because that would be bad, but I would say Brew's whole role in her biggest care in the world is Luke. She just wants to take care of Luke. And we've seen in A New Hope the older Brew saying he's not a farmer, so she does know that Luke has a different destiny. But I think she just wants to be his mom and care for him. She also teases that the Lars family has a character arc inside the show, even though it is a small one. You know, I'm curious about what that is, but we won't see how that goes until the last episode that the actress says will be amazing. Well, she she did give up. I mean, first of all, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. She thinks of herself as Luke's mother. I think that's... Clear. I mean, clear. Yeah, that's great. But I think she unintentionally gives a lot away here about the final episode. Because let's let's be... Let's call it as it is. She is a minor character in this, right? She's not... 
she's not one of the main actresses or she's not going to get the full script. You know what I mean? So the fact that she says the final episode is amazing very much implies the final episode will be on Tatooine and deal with her. Because she would know the, the plot be, exactly. by being there. Yeah. Yes, otherwise she would probably have no knowledge of how this thing ends. So uh -huh. she does give away how this potentially will end. Well, it gives it me at least... on Tatooine at mm -hmm. the Lars homestead. It will at least give me speculation. Like I said, I haven't read any leaks. But my speculation is, of course, that somehow Reva is going to end up there. That's... And she'll, you know, and Brew will see her trying to protect Luke. Luke might even show signs of the Force at this time for some reason with the battle. I don't really know. Like, stop making faces. I don't I'm know how faces. this goes. I'm not making faces. I'm trying to... Because and I'm someone I who, think I... Kenobi will then defend the homestead. Maybe this will patch up the relationship a little bit between Owen and Ben. And he'll give him the, you know, he'll be like, okay, I'm going to give him the Skyhopper now because uh, Ben actually is looking out for us and trying to be there for us. I mean, I'm I not going, I do know the leaks. I'm not going to get into them here, so don't worry about that. But, I mean, your theory sounds pretty pretty solid. I mean, we know, I mean, like I said, we can take away from, from her interview here that she's going to be a big part of the finale. It, we know Darth Vader isn't going to show up at the Lars homestead, right? So the only kind if of anything, threat, you know, unless a new threat is introduced, which would make zero sense considering Reva has basically been shown to be the co-threat to Vader, I guess we'll call her, the co-antagonist in this. So it does make sense that somehow Reva ends up at the Lars homestead and is defended by Obi-Wan, and that has a, a change of heart for Uncle Owen a little. That's my guess. And then Luke gets the Skyhopper and credits roll. Well, we know Luke has to get, you know, a Skyhopper because he has one. He has one, yeah. Maybe Owen bought him one. Like that. We'll That's throw away that. That's kind of jerky. <laughs> we'll throw away that, uh, that one that uh, Ben gave him, and uh, I'll go buy him one myself. Wow. I know. Well, hey, it's sassy Owen, right? Well, I'm sure that he's never going to think that he got this from Ben Kenobi. No, I don't think so. Owen's going to claim it. Owen's going to claim it. Oh, yeah. sassy Owen strikes again. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got for you this time, so now take to the comments below, tell us what you think of any of today's stories, or tell us what you think of what we had to say about them. So, let's talk some Star Wars, and until next time, thanks for watching.